Hi, welcome to Angel's Anything Show, Big Brother Recap. So on tonight's, hold on, I gotta swallow. Ah, much better. So on tonight's Thursday episode of Big Brother, um, we find out who gets eliminated. Now, everyone basically thought it was gonna be Polly, but before he peters out of the game, he still feels like he maybe has a shot. So we basically see him at the beginning of this episode kind of doing that like sad mopey thing and um, he apologizes to Natalie. He tries to make amends with people. He knows he only needs to secure three votes to stay in the house. And his boy, Paul, says he'll throw him a courtesy vote so that it's not like five to zero because that's friendship. And he did that for, um, he was willing to do that for other people. He did it for Victor. So he's relying on that and then he tries to go sweet talk James and Natalie and say, hey, if you keep me in the house, uh, I'm gonna be the, a bigger target than you. I'll do this, I'll do that, trying to strike all these deals. You know, I think he's barking up the wrong tree and uh, James is like, yeah, whatever. Like Natalie calls all the shots, which is like a typical thing that boyfriends do when they don't feel like having to like answer a question or like commit to anything. They just like put it on, on the woman. Anyway, we all know Natalie's not voting for Polly. She's the one who wants him out. So that's going on, and also, you know, as Polly, very itchy, as Polly's moping around and being utterly, like, ridiculous, he's, he's crying, oh, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so he's outside, and he's with James, and he goes, he, he's outside with James, and James is talking to him, and Polly's like, you could tell he's, like, been crying or whatever, or, like, at least pretending, but, like, dude, why are you pretending? You look crazy. And a butterfly flies by, and Polly's like, I fucking hate butterflies, man. Starts crying about the butterfly, and James is just like, what the? Like, you can tell none of James' friends, like, James and his friends, like, they don't fuck, they don't cry in front of each other, you know? So he's just like, it's gonna be okay, like, patting him on the back, he, and then he's like, he goes, you just have the butterfly effect, man, like, trying to make him laugh. Like, Polly doesn't even laugh at it, like, he's literally crying about a butterfly, it's insane. Like, you have gone cuckoo bananas. So that's happening, and then Corey, who's walking around in this skin-tight, like, patriotic suit from losing the, like, veto, like, it's some Zingbot punishment. He has to wait, wear some, some Uncle Sam thing. I don't know, I guess I missed that, but everyone's just walking around in crazy costumes. So, Corey is just like, dude, you really need, like, he... <laughs> He basically gives him this like motivational speech that he probably like received from like coaches in high school. It's like they're literally being so ridiculous. He's just they're just such fucking bros. And he's like, man, ba like basically like I get it. Like I've had a shitty week too, but like, you really need to get your head of your ass because you look utterly ridiculous. He doesn't say it like that, but he's like, come on, bro. Like your parents are watching. Like your brother's watching. Like, you gotta be tough, man. Yada yada, bro, bro, bro. Man hug, man hug, man hug. The end. Uh, uh. So these are people like I would never be friends with in high school or any time. Like we just don't run in the same circles, you know? I'm not running into these people at a fish concert. So before the veto happens, or the veto, before the elimination happens, we do a little catch up. First we see what's been going on with some older big brother couple. I don't even really care. They have a baby now, blah, blah, blah. Then, the really interesting part is we see uh, who, what's going on in the jury house. So first it's Devon, and then she sees um, Z come in, and they both get kind of emotional that they're like, what the fuck? I, she, Devon feels bad that Z is there, and then Bridget comes. So it's always cool to watch people's interactions after they're out of the house. It seems like they're getting along, and they predict that Polly will be out next. Um, also, Michelle, 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 what a strange bird. Um, when they're giving their uh, speeches before they get eliminated or whoever goes home, you know, they say their goodbyes or whatever, or like why they should stay, Polly like goes through each member of the house and he says like a nice sentiment about each person. He saves Michelle for last. Now it seems like they had some tension that didn't get shown a lot, where basically she takes all credit for blowing up his game, but really she's just trying to like not look like the worst super fan player ever. So her big claim to fame is, I blew up Polly's game, whatever, I blew up your game. It's like, no, actually Natalie blew up his game. So stop trying to take credit and act like you did something on the show and you've done literally nothing. And Polly goes, Michelle, like you seen a lot of, you've gotten a lot of things in this house, but the one thing you haven't had is a, a showmance. And he grabs her, dips her, and kisses her, and she's like so flustered, you can tell she's like totally aroused by it. And it's like, I don't know, 
I guess he was trying to be nice, but to me it seemed kind of needling because you can tell that she was like super jealous that everyone was in all these showmances. So the whole thing was really weird. It was like he and Corey's speeches were so long. It was like they were giving a speech like... It was like they were like saying goodbye to like their their fraternity or something. Like it was like... It was like... It was strange. Like... I don't even know. Like they were winning an award almost. Like big ups to this person at home, like I want to thank God, I want to thank my mom, like it was too much, it was too much. Anyway, as predicted, Polly goes home, <sighs> Polly goes home, um, and he does not have the round trip ticket, and then they check, to, and now the round trip ticket is invalid, so it has expired, so now they just look in the house to see who had it, and who had it? Paul had it. Of course, he's the one who discovered the secret room and he picked the first ticket that was the round trip ticket, which of course he had to let everyone know as soon as he got it. I fucking found the Paris room and I got the ticket. Like, we get it, we get it, we get it. If he wins, I swear to God, it'd be crazy. So, who is gonna be the dominant person in the house now? Um, what's gonna happen? I feel like now it's gonna get split off into these subgroups, so it seems like Michelle will probably be the one to go home next, right? Because now it's gonna be Paul and Victor together. Final two, uh, which could very well happen. It's gonna be Nicole and Corey together. They're gonna be like, final two. It'll be James and Natalie, final two. And that just leaves Michelle. So she better, she better think quick because she's definitely gonna be on the chopping block next and who knows who else. Probably try to get Corey out, right? Because he might now be wanting to put a target on everybody else's back. So we shall see what happens. On Sunday, the next twist is going to be that, um, the next care package from America, the person who receives it will have the opportunity to have, to become co-head of household, so there's going to be two heads of household, so, I don't know. Who do you think America's going to vote for? I think probably James, because everyone loves James, right? Um, so, we'll see. There is a episode on tomorrow, um, but it's like... I don't even know what it is. I don't know. It's I'm going to watch it, but I'm not going to be around, so I won't review it. I'll probably recap it on Sunday when I do the Sunday recap. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching this episode of Angel's Anything Show. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.